Hey folks, this is Georges from the Quarkus team, and in this short video, I would like to introduce one of the major enhancements we brought to REST Easy Reactive in this new Quarkus 2.0 release. So just to recap, um, for those of you who don't remember the history of REST Easy Reactive, in Quarkus 1.11, uh, we introduced our new implementation, our new JAXRS implementation, uh, which we call REST Easy Reactive, which is based on uh, Vertex for all the I.O. and tightly integrates with Quarkus for all the build and thus taking advantage of all the build time capabilities of Quarkus. Uh, the result was extremely good performance, like best in class performance uh, for this type of framework and the ability to for us to introduce a whole uh, new set of features um, and to, to iterate on this based on user feedback really, really quickly. Uh, also, in 1.13, continuing in the spirit, we introduced an implementation, a new implementation of the MicroProfile REST client based on the REST Easy Reactive technology. Uh, so now, um, with one th since 1.13, uh, you can use this new API to continue to write the, the interfaces you know for the implementing the REST client, but this time, uh, under the hood, everything is handled, all the I.O. is handled by Vertex, and things are generated at build time, which makes uh, the runtime footprint of these clients uh, much, much better. Uh, so every release, we continue to improve on this, right? But one of the major um, f uh, features that we brought in Quarkus 2.0, and the major themes, I would say, that spans more than Rusty's Reactive, but, this, but in this case, we're going to focus on Rusty's Reactive uh, to show the new Kotlin coroutine support that we have in this uh, in these two modules in the rest client and the rest easy reactive server part so people have been asking for this for a very long time but with the advent of rest easy reactive um, we've really had now had the capability to build Kotlin coroutine support on the already amazing foundation of uh, rest easy reactive uh, so before I get into uh, showing some Kotlin code, let's see how, uh, let's see a very simple example of what the, uh, what uh, a simple API that uses the REST client in, uh, in both blocking and non-blocking mode would look like in Java, right? So we have a, what we're going to do is create an API that hit, that um, uses an external API, um, changes the data a little bit, and then returns it. Right, so this is like super simple. All we're going to do is create, we have this REST interface that hits this external service, which the external service is this REST countries API. And it returns, we have a few different methods. We have one that returns um, a set of countries and does blocking IO because it returns the set and uh, thus needs to block. And we have two different versions of the same thing, which hit the, which hit the same endpoint but return asynchronous types and we'll only deal with the uni here so this does non these two do non-blocking io uh, thus return uh, async types and what we do in the react in the server part is that we take those countries that we um, extracted from the network call and we just use the name and return the name so let's see what that actually looks like um, if i hit this api with uh, country gr so this api basically searches for it, it does like a, a match uh, for the name and returns the whole country and then we extract the name so if i hit gr here it gives me a bunch of countries if i hit like let's say ita it'll give me italy and a few others and that's blocking io right that's when i was doing blocking io uh, so this uh, this is very easy for you to understand and write and read uh, but it doesn't scale as well. So when I want to, when I have high scalability uh, concerns, then I need to use the, the non-blocking version, which uses the, the underlying hardware much, much better. So in this case, um, the non-blocking IO, we see that the REST client returns a uni. And what we do, we take the uni, uh, we transform the, the countries into strings and return a uni and then rest easy reactive knows how to handle the uni so that's awesome right that uh, on its own uh this this ease of use of apis is amazing but the the folks in the kotlin community have had kotlin coroutines in, for a few years now which allows them to write this sort of api in a more sequential style so here you see that when i'm using the 
the reactive types, I need to chain operations. In this case, I need to use on item and transform and then uh, return a uni. But with Kotlin coroutines, you can write this in a more, let's say, um, more sequential manner, so, manner, something that most uh, developers are more familiar with. So uh, we'll stop this um, part of the application and we'll start what is, uh, we'll go to the Kotlin, the equivalent Kotlin coroutines um, implementation. So I'm using the same API here. I'm going to hit the REST countries API. And here I have the Kotlin version of the REST client. So what this does is basically you return the set, but you add the suspend modifier on the function. And when Kotlin sees this, it knows that it needs to generate a whole bunch of stuff behind the scenes in order to make this uh, non-blocking. And then uh, Quarkus and REST Easy Reactive now understand this modifier and can plug in the Kotlin coroutine support into the uh, Quarkus and Vertex reactive uh, stack. So everything continues to work totally reactively, but everything looks to, as a developer to be sequential. And the case in point is here when we use the client, right? And uh, remember, uh, we're using a suspend function that's returning a set. So in this uh, case, in the server API part, what I'm doing is I'm adding suspend to the, the API, right? The JAXRS endpoint. And now when I call the, the client in a suspend function, I can get, I can uh, do what amounts to like sequential processing, right? I could pretend, let's say that this was a uh, blocking call. And then I can just take the countries and return the names, right? I don't have to uh, deal with reactive types and chaining of different operations. I can just write my code as if it were sequential. So I, if I hit this again, um, now obviously the uh, the API was called name, so I need to change that back, and this just works, right? So USA, and it works. So this is um. This is a very important improvement uh, for the Kotlin, uh, Kotlin community. And it's uh, important, I think, for, for Java developers as well uh, to, to see that the, the use of non-blocking uh, non I.O. doesn't absolutely mean that they have to use uh, async types with chaining and everything. There are various styles that can be used. So what I wanted to show here is that with the, the amazing reactive layer that uh, Quarkus uses, which is ver in Vertex, and all the build time processing we do, we can now um, adhere to this paradigm as well and give users even more uh, options. So I hope that uh, video showed you in very quick fashion what this new Kotlin coroutine support is all about. And we have more Kotlin coroutine support and other things like uh, small right reactive messaging, uh, which is very important as well. And we continue to um, work to, imp to add even more support. So in the future, we will have um, Kotlin coroutine support and things like um, hibernate reactive panache. So thank you for your time, folks. And um, uh, see you in the community meetups and uh, other Quarkus videos.